So I recently picked up this Fender Princeton Course. Uh, love this amp. Uh, found it used. Um, got it home. So what I want to show you today is I got the amp home. And it's obviously a little bit old, but it is in great shape. So I just want to show you if you get into um, the situation with these amps. Let me just give it some uh, power here. That's what the amp looks like. And so I uh, just picked this guy up few days ago and of course what I want to show you what happens is over time you will start get start to get the old crackling pots so some of the channels uh, volume here pretty clean um, let me go here to my gain all right pretty clean pretty clean pretty clean some volume all right so not too bad, but definitely a little bit of uh, noise. Trebles, pretty good. Mid, bass is pretty clean. Reverb's pretty clean. Now, if I switch over, I uh, came with the foot switch, turn off my course, and you're gonna notice, there we go. Okay start to get that crackling especially in the gain limiter presence isn't too bad turn the volume chorus but really this is the big one the gain and you can hear the static so I'm going to show you today um, using uh, just a cleaner to go ahead and get rid of that sound. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give all these a clean. It's in really great shape, uh, but I want to just go ahead and uh, give it a good clean and get rid of, you know, the uh, crackling sound, uh, especially in the game, but give them all a good clean. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this bad boy apart and I'll check back in in a minute. So whenever working on, obviously, any amp, uh, key thing is unplug it. Never work on, you know, work on it, of course, when it's plugged in, no matter what. Uh, all power is off, everything is unplugged, and the product I'm going to be using today, uh, I'm sure you, I've had good luck with, is the D-Series Deoxit D5 um, for cleaning electronics um, and the contacts. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Uh, also recommend, I'm just going to put it over here on this uh, towel, because obviously you don't want to get your floor dirty. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, take this apart, which I will uh, we'll go ahead and show you. Um, so we'll uh, go on to our next step. I'll be back in one second. So one recommendation I always have is if you're going to take something apart that you're not completely familiar with is uh, always like pad. And more importantly, take pictures as you go, especially today. There's kind of really no excuse uh, or even videotape what you're going to do. Um, in this case, you can see uh, four screws that are on top. Obviously, I'm going to go ahead and remove the handle. Um, down here, uh, you can see I have the red and the black. And then what I like to do is kind of draw everything out, lay everything out, you know, neat screws, uh, kind of as I go. And it just makes the whole process of putting everything back that much easier. So, uh, again, I'm just going to start with the uh, four screws uh, on top. Uh, unplugging, obviously, uh, from down here. You can see this uh, power lead that comes down almost into like an RCA uh, connector type. And uh, pick up and just check them back in again. What I basically drew were the speakers um, the black, white, negative, positive, black, white, positive, negative, uh, and they're different. Obviously, here are my two uh, cables uh, handle kind of you know, just lay the screws off as we go. Um, the retainer screw that comes off here for the power, and the four, of course, screws that are on top. So that is um, where I'm at now, and I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, this panel, excuse me, and uh, we will resume. So after you remove the four screws on top, what you want to do then is just make sure when you put your hand underneath, there's going to be one screw on one side and one screw on the other. Because once you release those two screws, then this whole unit here is going to drop out. So just make sure I kind of kept my hand underneath as I released it, and it just slid out really nice. Uh, you can see where it goes on the top here. All right, obviously that's uh, shielded, but it slides right in and disconnected. And here we have our board. All right, so uh, I got lucky. I'm up here in the Northeast. So when I saw this bad boy, um, I always worry about especially mold and mildew because of the humidity up here in the Northeast uh, in New York. Um, but just by, this is my first look at this. This is actually very... 
uh, clean. Um, especially for the age of this, I've seen much, 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 much worse. So I'm just going to go through again and uh, clean these. Again, here's our uh, PR82, all right? And this is what it looks like on the bottom. Of course, our power supply and what it looks like from the front. Okay, just to give you an idea uh, where everything is, okay? Again, these bad boys made in the USA. And there's the uh, even signature, finished, okay? RQ, so uh, 1988, Fender Musical Instruments, you can see there. Um, but again, everything looks pretty clean. So what I'm gonna do, and by the way, if you need, if you ever need, of course, there's your fuse, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these, okay, knobs. Again, I kind of have everything uh, laid out in order of where I need them, uh, kind of my diagrams, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, clean out uh, these pots back here. Again, we can see the uh, opening where we're gonna go ahead and uh, spray in our cleaner and then uh, give it a whirl. So I'll check back in in a quick minute. Again, right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these uh, front knobs again. So, and do keep uh, With this one, especially these, these are nice. You can stand them up. Of course, I just make sure I'm not kinking any of the cables. Um, I like to turn all my dials down and you'll see to pull these off, they should pull off really easy. Should not give you any issues, okay? That's what the bottoms of these guys uh, look like. And again, I'm just gonna go uh, in order here. All right, and uh, pop all of, uh, these guys off. So um, once I get these off, I will go ahead and, uh, and check back in. And again, you can see all these dials. Uh, this is what they look like. Um, and again, I am gonna take a, a cleaner. Just wipe these down, get all this clean. You know, you can see the gunk and no matter what over time, they're gonna get dirty. So let me remove the rest of these and then uh, just I'll got the knobs off. Uh, another cleaner I do have good luck with is uh, Radio Shack makes one as well. Just called Precision Electronics Cleaner. Um, there's the SKU number if you wanna look it up. Uh, I've had good luck with it. And even just the outside, again, always recommend you know, again, sorry, hard to hold the camera. Uh, spray the rag as opposed to the board in this case. And just gonna work this around uh, each knob. Okay, and you can already hear, let me just do a, a few of them. And you'll see, well, first of all, how much dirt comes off. And now, uh, like I said, you can see the bottom where I got and the top I did not, but um, again, just because I'm holding the camera, but you can see the difference where we get in here. Like some of these, obviously I have not gotten, um, but just to get these clean, wipe them down. Again, uh, always recommend, um, you know, hold the, uh, uh, always spray the rag, I should say, as opposed to spraying the unit in this case. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get all the outside of the knobs and then we will go ahead and of course, get the pots uh, themselves and uh, get the front of the board all nice and clean. Um, one thing, just be careful. I know a lot of people love the, the compressed airs. Um, they have their purposes, but I've also seen so many people damage things with them because they use way, way too much of it or too much of a force of an air and it winds up damaging things. So gotta be careful with the compressed air. So, all right, let me get these wiped down once I get the front of the board clean and then we'll jump into the, uh, the back of the pots um, and then kind of go from there. But you can even see here the difference between these that are clean versus, you know, these guys. So obviously uh, a big difference and uh, check back in a quick. Got the knobs uh, all cleaned, um, the front, Okay, you can see definitely a big difference. And uh, just any, if you're not from, you know, if you wanna be safe with this stuff, be careful. I always recommend, you know, wear goggles, wear uh, protective gear. This stuff is not good to breathe in. You wanna be in an area that's, you know, got some good ventilation. It is highly flammable. But of course the advantage, and again, you can see this came out really nice and clean. Um, of course, as it dries, you know, immediately, it's, uh, you know, alcohol base, it just, it, the stuff dries almost immediately. But again, I always recommend spraying it on the rag and then putting it on the board. So um, we're going to get into the pots now. Okay. And I'm going to flip this bad boy around again, just make sure I don't kink any of these uh, cables. And we'll get to uh, cleaning the pots out on this uh, Fender Princeton course. All right, so I've got the board flipped around. So what I like to do now is besides I've got my thing on the ground, obviously, protect my carpet. I'm going to put my rag underneath as well. So this can, of course, you can see you want it in the open position and you'll see the little opening back here on the top of each pot. 
that is where we're going to put our spray. Now, after we spray it, what you're gonna do, of course, go to the knob. You're gonna usually go back about three or four times. You wanna make sure that we get this in there really good. Move it back and forth. Again, it's gonna evaporate really, really quick. Um, it'll do a good job. So again, we're just gonna take this here, put it right on top, okay, right by the opening, and give it a quick squirt. All right, here we go. All right, so three little squirts. I'm now gonna go ahead, work my knob up, work my knob back, work my knob up, work my knob back, and go ahead and do it one more time. All right, and then of course, put it all the way in the down position. Gonna move to my second one. And all I'm gonna do is the same thing here for each one. Okay, give it a squirt. Again, gonna move it up. Gonna move down. Let's go two times. I wanna make sure we get this worked in there really well. Three and then four. Cause sometimes you'll, you can get lucky if you don't wanna take these apart. I've seen guys spray it right in the front. It depends on the board. Sometimes you can get lucky and it'll help it out, but you really wanna work it, uh, especially into the back. Let's go to our third one here. All right. All right, we got a good squirt in there. And again, same thing, up and back, up and back. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do all these. I'm gonna do each one. I obviously don't wanna bore you to death. All right, there we go. And I can even tell, you know, slightly. They're definitely feeling smoother. And of course, the more dirt and grime you get in here over time, the more they're gonna start to hang up. Uh, another thing I absolutely do not recommend, I was talking to one guy who was talking about using WD-40. Please don't ever go near a board with WD-40 because it leaves an oily residue behind. Yes, it's a lubricant. It's not made for electronics. And all it's gonna do is attract dirt and grease and grime and... He swears by it, but to each his own, I would never go near a, a board with WD-40, so please. I know there's other dry lubricants out there and stuff, but really, you know, look around, but this stuff is, is great. I've had great luck with the Oxid-5, like I said, or the uh, electronics cleaner. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of these, go uh, right down the board, get the rest of these clean, and then uh, I'll check. All right, so I got these all sprayed. Another thing, again, I always recommend, just do one at a time. I've seen some guys go along and just... You know, boom, 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 spray them all, then go back and do it. This stuff dries so quick. Again, you know, this isn't a project you want to rush. Take your time. You know, I'm giving myself a good hour, you know, to do this. So, you know, again, this isn't a job that you want to rush. Another thing is when you're putting these, um, you know, in, for example, when I was turning them, you know, I noticed I got one loose here. There it is. Okay. So you see these start to come loose here. All right. No big deal. Again, so all you need is... Uh, you know, I've got a little adjustable. I'm just going to go through and just do not over tighten them. Just snug them up, you know, make sure they're all tight before we put it all back together again, you know, and go from there. And then I'm just going to give it each a little spray to each one of the inputs uh, as well. You know, my effects obviously send and return the foot switch headphones and give those a, a good cleaning. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, we'll put this thing back together and uh, we'll see how it sounds. And then uh, we will go from there. So putting this, of course, assembly, I've got all my knobs clean. Uh, again, gave a little bit of a spray um, to each of the inputs, the sends, of course. And again, so reassembly is just going to be the reversal, of course, of everything. Remember, we're going to have our six screws. Uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five, and number six. So those are my six screws I have laid out. And then of course we'll hook the uh, speakers up. Um, I've got the grill off just cause I went in and uh, just dusted this guy slightly. Also, you know, just please don't ever take a vacuum um, unless you've got something in there that you can clump out, but really be careful with a vacuum near these guys. Cause you can really, I've seen again, guys do more damage uh, then help. And again, the last thing is if you're really not sure and you're not comfortable doing this, then obviously find a tech. You know, it's not worth ruining a good amp over something, but uh, I mean, this is a pretty simple procedure. But if you're still not comfortable, I always recommend just find a local, uh, you know, local tech and uh, that can work on these and they should, uh, you know, give you a good price. Hopefully, you know, always good uh, to get an estimate. But let's go ahead and we'll put this thing back together and then we'll fire it up and see so how she's last thing before I put this thing back together. I always like to make sure either let it sit for a little bit or what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn a fan on here 
just to make sure you want to get all the moisture out of it. Um, any residue that may be sitting, you know, maybe somewhere puddled in. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my fan. I'm going to let this sit and just let it run about 10 minutes. Again, just make sure this is really nice and dry uh, before we hook everything back up. I just don't want to have any, you know, residue or anything that sits out. Of course, when I put it back into uh, the case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this fan running. All right, there we go. Let this thing dry out for about 10 minutes and then uh, we'll put it back together. Just remember putting this piece back in, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six screws right there. So always recommend don't over tighten them, just get them snug. I'm gonna get our knobs back on, our speakers plugged back in, our power supply back in with the clip. We'll get this thing plugged in and we'll get back in uh, see if we corrected the problem um, and again i had good luck just always support it i got one inside first then i did one top and then i got on the other side and then they all went in nice and clean so it was no issue putting it back together all right so let's see if our uh, efforts paid off i just got the uh cover back on knobs back on uh let's see what happens let's go cool we got our power back Okay, I'm uh, going to go here and grab our uh, foot switch. And let's get our foot switch plugged in. All right, and there's our foot switch. All right, so it's going to give a little bit of volume here. We're in our clean channel. And just moving. Okay. Got nothing clean. Reverb. So far, so good. All right, we're gonna go over now to our gain where we had the, uh, especially the static on the gain. Let's switch over here. Let's give it a little bit of volume. All right. Uh, nice and clean. So our presence, all right, there's our mid boost. But I got no static now. Our presence, super clean. Our limiter, super clean. This is all clean. It's when I get really up. There we go. And again, as, as I continue to move these knobs, it's going to get in there and clean that. But compared, uh, much, much better. Let's go turn on our chorus. Super clean. Okay. All right. So. So compared to how we were, uh, big, big difference. Again, just cleaning our uh, pots. And again, I know as I move these around, even get some more in there, we go back again. But really nice, smooth in there throughout the gain. There we go. And no more crackling anymore. So I am gonna go ahead and do a video on the review of this uh, great, great, uh, vintage Princeton Chorus Fender amp. Obviously, I'm going to do that in a, in a separate one. But uh, super, super happy with this. And uh, again, so I hope that helped you out. If you have any issues, again, cleaning the pots, uh, hopefully this uh, helped you out. Again, any suggestions, comment them below. If you liked it, of course, please like it and uh, subscribe. And uh, thanks, guys, for watching. So I want to finish this video by just saying I went back and after working the knobs over, you know, a, a few more times, it is now thankfully completely um, gone. So no more static um, crackling from the pots at all. Again, just working them back, you know, um, but it is nice. What a big difference to be able to go through here now and not get any of that uh, stack, you know, static and crackle and pop and all that other noise. So uh, very, very happy with the way that it turned out. 
Um, and again, so hopefully this will uh, help you. Uh, any type of amp, but especially if you have the uh, Fender Princeton Chorus, and uh, just go ahead and get you know get rid of those sounds and get your amp uh, back up and playing the way, of course, it was intended to uh, uh, hear. And the incredible sounds that, of course, this uh, amp makes. So, again, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps somebody out. Um, and uh, please, like I said, you know, enjoy these amps. They're great. Take care of them. And uh, hopefully they'll uh, all give us uh, many more years of service. Take care, guys.